Yes. Uh, now we have uh, the next presentations from the Dominic Priors. Dominic Priors had a long career spirit between academic research and teachings and industrial experiences in engineering and urban mobilities. He is an expert in innovative transport modes for logistics and mobilities of goods and passengers. He also managed several national as well as European projects dealing mainly with electromobility and new mobility organization. As tôi xin giới thiệu diễn giả tiếp theo là ông Dominic Brier. Ông Dominic Brier thì có kinh nghiệm lâu năm trong việc nghiên cứu và giảng dạy, cũng như có kinh nghiệm trong cái lĩnh vực uh, trong lĩnh vực về nghiên cứu các vấn đề về kỹ thuật cũng như là giao thông đô thị. Ông là một chuyên gia trong lĩnh vực hậu cần và vận tải. Ông đã quản lý một số các cái dự án quốc gia cũng như là ở châu Âu. Ông Dominic thì sẽ trình bày cho chúng ta phần nội dung liên quan đến việc là tạo môi trường thuận lợi cho các bên liên quan và cái hợp tác giữa các bên. Good morning, good afternoon, Dominic. Uh, we are welcome you to join the session today. And, and uh, I have thus introduced you with the audience from Vietnamese. So uh, now we would like to hear from your experience on the topic of today. Please. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs. Lanfi, and uh, uh, well, good good afternoon for all of you, and thank you for listening to me. Uh, so, uh, well, you will have the, the translated uh, slides. So, my presentation will deal with the, the uh, well, the, the it's not planned for EV infrastructure, but it's creating well, it's creating enabling environment for stakeholders. So, I will present to you uh, some actions not probably not all actions that could be done but the main actions which i see to which are uh, aiming to enable the participation of the main stakeholders in electromobility well as you've seen before in the sasha presentation some are very important like uh, the utility and uh, the grid operators that are quite important but they are not alone there are also other uh, Uh, stakeholders and uh, that's especially those we are uh, looking for uh, using the the electricity at, at the end so if you can change the slide go to the next slide thank you so uh, my presentation will uh, be a uh, bit of three things first we will go on uh, a global view of the electric mobility world just to remind you who are the, the stakeholders in fact because they are very uh, numerous and we will uh, focus on some uh, possible enabling actions mainly from the user's point of view and the relations between them and the different stakeholders uh, it's a complex network really because uh, uh, we try to match uh, different worlds different worlds. the first Uh, time I, I experienced such difficulty to 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 have connection between those those worlds was 10 years ago uh, in a big uh, European project which was called Green Emotion, and it was the first time that uh, uh, grid operators and uh, utility produce uh, operators met the uh, manufacturers, car manufacturers, and the authorities and so they realize don't have the same objectives they don't they realize they don't have the same time horizon to uh, make their own strategies for instance car manufacturers were only five years horizon while uh, local authorities have 25 years and uh, utility operators have rather between 15 and 20 years so you have to match all these worlds and if you can change the, the slide please uh yeah next slide there and so uh in this world you have different type of actors which are, we have not the same objective and the same time horizon and especially if you look at local authorities for instance their main objective is to satisfy citizens who are known and professional demands okay and sometimes to have uh some small cities and to optimize the public money that's uh typically uh the 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 act of 
of the uh, mobility in cities. And also you're the users as well. In that way, it's more the individual users, but if you are, your, your time horizon is rather real time, uh, a very short term horizon. And you have the professionals where uh, the, the, the main objective is more or less profitability in, in, in any way uh, you can think. And there are different types of uh, professionals. So on the next slide, Thank you. Just click yes. First, you have the users, then the main stakeholders. If I want, if I, uh, if I can say that, because they're the really the 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 one who will use the electromobility. And then you have different types. You have the, of course, the uh, individuals, you and me, going to work or, or going uh, uh, traveling for leisure and so on. And you have also operators for passengers and goods. You have also the operators in parking as well, which are used because they implement these, uh, these station these charging stations and you have also the uh, some service providers especially in the mobility as a service domain which deliver apps and uh, sasha told about some of them uh, when uh, for, for supporting charging and you have also the enterprises some enterprises which are uh, involved in the domain because sometimes and we will come back and uh, Sasha also told that uh, they, they can have charging station in their uh, premises. Then you have also, just click the, the second time, you have local authorities. And local authorities have two, uh, well, two ways or, or two types of uh, participation. First, they are the regulating uh, authorities and the mobility department are the organizers of the mobility of the uh, or see, and you have also at the global, national, and re regional level some strategies. But there are also users because they have a fleet and they, they manage the transport, uh, or sometimes they directly manage the buses and so on. So they are on both way. And on the other hand, if you click again, you have all the uh, all the. the you know, the, the energy suppliers, the electric suppliers, and uh, they are connecting, of course, through the charging station uh, operators, which manage or inst install and then manage the uh, charging stations. And as Sasha said before, you have all the links between the production uh, distribution of uh, electricity, which is also uh, another world because uh, with the decentralization of the production of energy of type of this renewable energies, you can have different configuration uh, for the delivery of the energy. If you look, for instance, for instance in some emerging countries where you have uh, direct solar uh, production or electricity production, you can have really local uh, decentralized energy uh, production, which can feed some charging stations through batteries or storage and so on. So it's it's a world. It's so you have to manage this world. And if you click again, you have the last type of uh, stakeholders, which are in, in line also because they have to, to, to be involved in this in this process or, or in the dialogues. You have the vehicle manufacturers, of course. Uh, first, because they, they produce the vehicles. And uh, if we talk of cars and trucks, of course, big companies, normally sometimes big companies, but in, in the case, for instance, of Vietnam, you have a lot of uh, small uh, manufacturers of motorcycles, e-bikes, e-motorcycles, which, which must be involved and which have to be involved in, in, in the process. And for the maintenance as well, when you talk about recycling batteries and so on. So uh, they have to be uh, involved in the process. And you have the civil engineering companies as well, and all are the, 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 the companies which has to be, um, uh, well, in, involved in the process because as when you have uh, to, to build or to install uh, uh, charging stations, for instance, uh, you need to have them uh, around. You have also on the other side, the, the banks and the insurances, because it's not maybe at the local level, but in global, you have 
specific uh, for instance uh, for insurance for 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 electric vehicles or you have the banks and other funding organizations with, which have to be involved because they can help funding or supporting the installations and of course you have the urbanists the architects all the people who are in charge of the future of the city which have to think about how to uh, make a city better or at least uh, using uh, electromobility uh, as a way of, of the mode of transport. So all these uh, companies, people uh, and organisms have to be uh, or must be considered as stakeholders. So if we go in more detail, next sl slide, please. Uh, before going in the enabling actions, you also must consider uh, uh, there's some relativity, uh, rel relativity and adaptability of the possible of the actions which are possible. First, you must consider that there are several levels. I will talk in this speech mainly about local level, what is possible at local level. But of course, there are some actions which need to be um, decided at national or, or regional level, such as uh, tax incentives or, or advance uh, for tax rebates or, or reg registration rebates, things like that, must be done at uh, national level. For instance, we have in France and in other, this, it is in other countries, a uh, specific program uh when you where you get incentives when you uh, give back your old vehicle and you you have some incentive to buy electric vehicle that's possible you have also uh, uh some money can be done by what called individuals which are more or less uh companies or small companies who can have uh, some local actions or global actions when uh companies make special offers for instance uh, car manufacturers or bike manufa motorcycle manufacturers make special offers to uh, to foster the de deployment of electric vehicles. You also uh, must design uh, uh, the, the 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 well your your your, your uh, mobility uh, policy. Uh, electromobility policy according to uh, stakeholder needs. Uh, otherwise, there could be a big failure. For instance, we had some years ago, uh, there's a lot of, uh, well, uh, rush in France about putting everywhere, uh, but that was a political uh, trend, to uh, charging stations everywhere in, in, for the, uh, on the public domain. Uh, that was, uh, well, some five, six years ago. And then you had a lot of uh, very nice charging stations, always empty, <laughs> with nobody charging, because first, there was not so many vehicles, then they were not at the right place. And well, or, or you had people who are just uh, parking their cars for uh, many, many hours blocking the station. So, uh, and that was, and this is still a big failure. Okay, so and you have also to 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 consider the the culture, the ways of of uh, uh, managing a country, for instance, and is in, and your uh, the way you involve stakeholders is ob obviously different according to the countries and the the, the actions to, you have to enable uh, you care for enabling. The, uh, the, the environment is different. For instance, if you look at the uh, the Norwegian case, Norwegian case, for instance, where uh, there's a lot of uh, rebate on taxes uh, for the vehicles. Uh, at least there's no uh, taxes on. Uh, well, there were no taxes on electric vehicles. Well, uh, and on the contrary, there are big taxes on uh, ICE vehicles. Okay, that's because. Norwegian, uh, uh, Norwegian country and Norwegian authorities uh, can earn a lot of money, have a lot of money, but it's possible to do that from uh, <laughs> partially from the, 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 the sale of the petrol they have in the North Sea. So uh, it's quite different. And you have to think first, what is the best for your country and for the stakeholders of your country, which is, uh, and you have to, to think about 
if you change the slide, please, uh, you have to uh, determine what motivates each type of stakeholders. Uh, the, the costs first, that's always the cost, the costs, either purchase cost, exploitation, maintenance costs, and so on. You have the commercial aspect, if the users are professional, so if sales, how, you, how many sales uh, you, you can have, what is the image you can uh, give, and of course you have the uh, utilization, is it easy to, to use the cars or, or the, the, the vehicles, are they reliable, is it secure, do you have any service around, and so on and so on. So, so uh, you have to think first on what is the motivation of each stakeholders, and of course, since the motivations are different to the stakeholders, uh, you have to balance uh, the enabling actions between them, between the stakeholders, because uh, what is positive for one is negative for the other one. So you have to, uh, well, either to force uh, the people using uh, the, the what you decide, either you have to uh, try and, uh, try to find cooperation or collaboration between them. So now uh, that I've set up the, 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 the global view, just go in more details about the, the different stakeholders. So if we go first and the next slide uh, on the uh, individuals, I mean the, the, the users you are uh, of everybody, uh, uh, people, uh, any people, uh, just remind me that if you were uh, yesterday uh, during my talk, uh, maybe you, uh, you remember that I told you about the top-down and bottom-up strategies. And this is more for the bottom-up strategies, okay? But the first thing is what they, they want is the, uh, want to be reassured, is the implementation or, or the availability of energy. So uh, the first is, the, the first concern, the first, what, what enables uh, their participation to, to this process is to be sure or reassure about the availability of energy. Can I charge my uh, vehicle? So uh, you can implement charging station everywhere on street, new buildings and so on, renovation. You have to facilitate to use, to, to, to have charging stations at work and you have also to facilitate the interoperability facilities, as Sasha mentioned uh, previously. And uh, uh, you have also cost, I mean, we talk about that, but if we go more in detail in the next slide, please. Thank you. Now, uh, just si sli this slide, just to show you the, uh, well, the links between the various stakeholders on the different uh, aspects when you want to facilitate charging. When you want to facilitate charging, you need to have the visibility and to put it at the right place. To do that, you need to work with urban planners, charging operators, utility uh, providers, civil engineering, and enterprises uh, for the private localization when they have to. Uh, well, and it's complex. And of course, you have also to, to discuss with, uh, sometimes with the municipality and the people. I'm involved in, in, in such uh, a decision because uh, I work for, for an assembly committee for that in my own uh, urban community. And uh, it's very complicated to have a, a good approach where to put the stations, for instance, because you have several considerations to, uh, we have the technical ones. Do you have enough electricity, enough power in that place? Do you have a flow, an enough flow of people going by or passing by? And uh, do you have uh, the, 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 the attractive points nearby and so on and so on. So it's not so easy to first define what is the best place which will uh, facilitate the use of uh, your charging stations. So this, and, and this is quite important because that's what enables the users to use these stations. Then 
de interoperability, as uh, Sasha said before. But this involves a lot of people, the, the charging manufacturers, the operators, the vehicle manufacturers, because the interoperability is not only uh, for the payment and the fact that you can use it everywhere, but it is also inside the car if you have the good charger or the good uh, software to charge and so on. So you have all the people uh, in the vehicle manufacturing. Of course, you have the tarification aspect. There was one question about that, uh, but this is also very important. So you have to define as a municipality with the DSOs, with the charging operators, what is uh, the tarification. You have also to discuss, and this is related to the, to the reachability or the accessibility, the physical accessibility to the station. So where to find a, a, a charging station available, not uh, broken <laughs> uh, or, or out of order. So you have to discuss with the developers of uh, specific apps and of course the charging stations uh, operators to have connected stations, for instance. And also you have the facility to use it, uh, to have the right plug. You have, you have since you have also different type of, uh, uh, for the time being, different type of plugs, you need to have all the, 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 the standards of plugs and so on and so on. So you see, uh, you see that, uh, the, the, the involvement, uh, well, to enable the users, uh, the drivers, you and me, to use uh, these uh, charging stations or, or to use electric vehicles, uh, you have to do that. And either you have this at home, as I said before, or on uh, public or private domain. Well, the questions are almost the same. Uh, it's a bit different, but they are almost the same. So uh, this is, uh, for, for, for each of these questions, you have to uh, discuss with the different stakeholders to, uh, to have a cooperation, collaboration to find the best solutions. Then you can click once more, normally, yes. And that was just a, a short remark, but, uh, uh, on the well, I mean, on the public domain or, pri uh, or open domain, uh, yes, you need to have powerful charging stations only because uh, we still have some debates. Well, at least in France, but in, in other countries, where to how what is the power of the charging stations? But if somebody asks me, uh, you you want to have uh, well stations which are not obsolete in the the coming years, you need to have powerful stations because the, the, the cars will have uh, more, uh, more power in the battery pack. Uh, it's a bit different, of course, if you look, if you talking about uh, e-bikes or e-motorcycles, uh, which require less power. But uh, it's, it's another point because if well, I, I didn't, but if you look at uh, I told you before, if you look at the uh, battery swapping problem for motorbikes, for instance, you need to have really a, a dialogue between the different uh, manufacturers uh, of batteries and of motorbikes uh, in order to have uh, interchangeable uh, batteries. It's a problem in that way, so you need to have relationships between these uh, stakeholders. If you go uh, next slide, yes, well, just uh, and I won't do that for all because it would take a long time. But uh, is the same when you want to to, to decrease the, the the purchase cost, for instance, you have the incentive first, of course. Uh, and then you have to convince funding organizations to, for, for, to have the, the, the money for that and to do these uh, incentives to, towards your uh, uh, users or citizens. If you are at local, I'm still looking at local level, of course, because as I told before, it's a bit different when you are at national level, uh, level where you can have uh, other actions. But, and you could also uh, uh, 
the product side and uh, on the local manufacturers, the startups, are mainly in the case of uh, light vehicles, like, uh, well, light, really light four wheels, but otherwise two or three wheelers, for instance, where you have a lot of local manufacturers, startups, and so on. So uh, you can work with them uh, to help them, to, to, to push them to, to, to go on the market, to find incubator, incubators, for instance, and so on for instance and so on but you have also to work with them and the people with the uh, manufacturers of charging station about the protocols about the equipment where to put them you have to to work with the batteries uh, suppliers and producers so all these have to work together in order to find out the best way to to have cheapest uh, vehicles and you have also the the, the possibilities to to retrofit more files, uh, but it's also a possibility. And then it's more with local uh, garages or mechanics that you can work, which also have to work with uh, the, the designers of batteries mainly and other uh, electric components or, or, or electric motorization components. So this is another uh, way, uh, or, or you see that the the, the, the stakeholders are more or less the same, not always the same. It depends on what are your actions. But of course, you see that always you find the uh, charging stations, manufacturers or, uh, or, or, or operators. Well, they are not very far from the discussions. Then uh, we can uh, go on the next slide, please. And I will go uh, quickly on, on, on the rest because I see that the time is going on uh, just click again because uh, I have some uh, so you can have a track traffic adventure. that's uh, first the uh, for the well for the city or local authorities to decide and you you have also and views on uh, low emission zones which are uh, a way to to make or to push the use of uh, of electric vehicles and all access authorizations you could have dedicated parking or dedicated lines and so on. And uh, Sasha talked about the, these uh, parking places for uh, electric vehicles. And you have also, the, as I told before, uh, for instance, for different services, like the deployment of e-electric apps. We talked a bit about that uh, concept yesterday. But in that case, you have to involve charging operators, utilities, you have uh, uh, the private sector for a local action, where to put it, uh, what kind of activities, who is going to own the place, and so on. So it's another uh, type of relationship that you have with all stakeholders. And uh, I would just, uh, you can also organize a joint proc procurement uh, for uh, small companies, for instance, who want to be electric, who want to have electric vehicles. You can, have, you can do that. It's a way to enable uh, the, the, the development. And you have also to work on the intermodality inside your own transport system, providing, for instance, uh, bike e-bikes or e-motorcycles at the main stations, uh, bus stations, BRT stations, or, or roads, or rail stations. So these are only for individuals. What is possible then? We can go quickly through the others. Uh, please change, okay. Yes, and I will stop after that. But uh, for fleet owners, it's also, you, you can work also, of course, with the fleet owners, which are, uh, uh, that's more the, uh, the top-down approach as told yesterday. You have almost the same uh, actions to enable as previously for individuals, but you have some more, uh, for instance, to, 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 to help them to install charging stations or depots, uh, to find out and to, to involve the people there uh, for uh, at depots. Uh, you, you also have uh, uh, different ways, for instance, uh, you can have some uh, charging stations reserved uh, for 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 the professionals that has been done in many cities uh, 
could have a specific charging stations or, or time uh, reserved for uh, professionals, uh, either fixed hours or uh, on uh, on call. You can call and have the the the, the charging station reserved for you, for instance. Uh, you have also the ways to organize the the the, the, the traffic, for instance, to, to 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 give access to airports uh, only to uh, electric taxis or to stations. This is already done in some countries, uh, even in emerging countries. But you have also for deliveries. You have also for time uh, time deliveries. For instance, uh, the night delivery. Which are uh, used, uh, which use only electric vehicles or electric vans, uh, for instance. It's another way to help uh, the deployment of uh, electric mobility in uh, companies with, uh, uh, with logistic companies. And you have also another way which is used is it, which is used is the replacement of the vehicles. It's it's done in. Uh, mainly for informal transport, and in some African countries, it's done, and uh, where where there is a lot of uh, informal transport, and the, the vehicles are well are bought by the <coughs> the, the, the the managers of the fleet, uh, and the uh, authority just uh, pay for the <coughs> the difference of price between ice normal ice vehicle and. Uh, the electric vehicle. So this difference uh, is paid by, uh, by by the local authorities. So it's a way to enable uh, the, 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 the the fleet owners to, to access uh, the electric mobility. And of course, you can work on the uh, different services, uh, mainly on, on training the drivers, the operators, the maintenance. This can be done also by the municipalities. This can be organized by the municipalities, for instance, to have uh, or, or to help, for instance, to to when you have in some cities you have uh, bus com on companies, bus companies, for instance, you have simulators for buses, uh, bus driving, okay, to, to train uh, the drivers. Then you can also have uh, simulators for electric buses driving, for instance. It's another way to, and you can uh, push people to develop such uh, software. So you see there are a lot of enabling actions that can be done on the most concerned users, which are uh, the, the, the people who drive every day on the road, uh, and they, they, to help them to change to to turn to electromobility. Then on other stakeholders, if you can change the slides, uh, yes, I talk. Just go on because I talk already of that. Uh, so for service providers, I will just talk about uh, vehicle sharing, for instance. Uh, for vehicle sharing, uh, you can have only uh, you can ask for uh, to have only electric vehicles, which is done already uh, for vehicle sharing. So you can allow uh, the, the the space for uh, for to do this vehicle sharing uh, or the license uh, just for uh, people who, who are sharing electric vehicles. You can also help them. In uh, using uh, for that's for uh, two wheelers, of course, actually two wheel. But you have uh, car sharing stations. You have to balance car sharing stations to where you know to 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 equilibrate to to the the, the number of uh, bikes or, or motorcycles, scooters uh, on the stations. You can have uh, you can. Allow uh, to to the people who are transferring the these uh, these two wheelers bikes uh, to use the bus lane or, for instance, the dedicated dedicated lanes, because for them it's quicker to do that rather than being uh, uh, in the congestion or, or, or of the difficulties of the traffic. Then you can have also uh, uh, other actions if you change. The slide you can have also action for the enterprises. Uh, first, we thought that of that 
before, but to facilitate the implementation of, of charging stations at work. And you can see uh, on the right side uh, some uh, guidelines to do that with the managers of these uh, companies. But you can organize transport uh, of the employees by e buses or, or, or again, uh, I would say, um, help or support the enterprises to, to buy e buses. Uh, for the transport of their employees. And you can also have, uh, it's another way, but uh, when the, the municipality is making tenders, you can have in the criteria some bonus for the suppliers which are using EVs. This is also another action to enable uh, the, the, the use of electric vehicles. Then uh, to finish the next slide, and I will finish on that, uh, come back to the national uh, level, sometimes regional level. Uh, there are a lot of actions also that can be done, and but the most, the, the main ones are first the, to have standard protocols for all EV technologies. This can't be done at local level, of course, but uh, but it's some of the uh, most important uh, actions uh, that has to be uh, set up. And then you have also, uh, but Sasha told about that before, the dynamic management of EV chargers and the smart charging uh, facilities, which has to be at national level. And uh, also, the, as it is, it is done in some countries, in uh, sometimes uh, there are something also a bit like uh, that at a uh, European level, but it's more at a country level to have uh, the open data system uh, and to oblige uh, that, the in, that all charging stations which are implemented are uh, connected or can have uh, an open data uh, process in order to facilitate the connections between uh, the station to and to uh, well to use only one uh, subscription to uh, charge in all stations of your country. It's done at regional level. For instance, in Akita, New Aquitaine, where I live, it's done that uh, all stations which are implemented, you have the same uh, card. Uh, or once you have subscribed, subscribed in one uh, company which are managing the staging charging stations, then uh, it's interoperable, interoperable with other uh, stations of other companies in uh, in Jan, which is a large region, well, probably the largest in France. Okay, so I will stop there and we we'll, uh, and I welcome all your questions. Uh, thank you, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, and thank you for listening to me. And uh, well, if you have questions, don't hesitate. Yeah, thank you, Peter Dominic, for the presentation. It provides us a cross view overviews of uh, electromobilities world with all the stakeholders and the relevant issues. I think that there are also many enabling actions for different stakeholders that we can apply to the Vietnam context. Thank you for the, your presentation. And now we are welcome question from the audience. À, như vậy là ông Dominic đã kết thúc phần trình bày của mình. Ạ. Nếu các anh chị có câu hỏi thì có thể cho lên phần chat box để chúng ta có thể trao đổi cùng diễn giả. Ở đây thì em, đây thì tôi đã nhìn thấy một câu hỏi rồi ạ. Thì xin phép sẽ dịch câu hỏi đó cho uh, diễn giả. Từ anh uh, Đức ạ. Uh, technically, I said, please, is the charging station located? Uh, Dominic, we have one question from the audience. Uh, he wants to ask about whether the charging station can located at or near the petrol station. Because in the next maybe 20s or 30s years or longer, Vietnam will still have uh, the electric vehicle and uh, ice vehicle at the same time. So in that condition, uh, we will, won't have enough space for the charging station. So 
if that's okay, if we have the same place for the petrol station and the uh, electricity charging station? Well, it is not a problem at all <laughs> to have them both. And uh, it's starting to develop in many countries, for instance, in the highways, on the highways, you can find, uh, well, normal stations every 40, 50 kilometers, for instance. And you have also uh, uh, charging stations, powerful ones, uh, because it's on the highway. So it's at least 50 kilowatts uh, for the time being. But it will be the, the, the future of, of all charging stations, because uh, you need a lot of power to go uh, further on. But it's really, it's totally possible. And some companies, for instance, some uh, companies which features, which manufactures uh, petrol uh, fueling station, big ones, are also now producing uh, electric charging stations. The same company are uh, manufacturing both. I know them, but the, the main ones in France are, are, are doing that. And you uh, because uh, and the advantage is that they have already all the interoperability systems because the difference is that you can pay directly with your uh, bank card and not with a specific card. So that's most that's very important. Yeah, thank you for that. Như ông Dominic có trả lời thì cái việc mà chúng ta có thể để chạm sạc xe điện và chạm sạc à, à, chạm à, xăng dầu bình thường ở cùng một địa điểm là hoàn toàn có thể và rất là nhiều nước thì hiện tại vẫn đang thực hiện theo cái hướng đó đặc biệt là ở Pháp thì các cái công ty mà vận hành các cái chạm xăng dầu thì có thể vận hành luôn cả các cái chạm sạc xe điện ạ Đấy là câu trả lời đến từ ông Dominic Thank you Dominic, I have just translated the your answer to the mm -hmm. audience. Good. And see, uh, would like to, uh, he would like to say thank to your answers. Thank you. Nếu các anh chị có câu hỏi nào khác nữa không ạ? Thì chúng ta sẽ cùng trao đổi luôn với bác Dominic ạ. I think that we <laughs> we have one more. Uh, cảm ơn anh Đức ạ. Ban tổ chức đã nhận được câu hỏi của anh ạ. Bây giờ sẽ uh, cùng uh, nói trao đổi với diễn giả. Uh, in the country that uh, in the country that have the developed electric vehicle system like in France, in your countries, is the network of charging station planned and operated by the government or by private enterprises? Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not by the government, that's true. That's sure, it's not the government. But uh, at the beginning, it was uh, managed by uh, local authorities, mainly, mm. okay? And well, they, they have a specific well the de delegation of public services okay but they were at the uh, at the launch of the, the the process that was the local authorities and they delegated the uh, operational sides but now it's more or less private and there are a lot of companies which are well there are sometimes semi-public companies because they are or, or, or they belong to uh the subsidiaries for instance of edf which is the company of uh, uh, the, the, the supplying the electricity in France. But that you have also a lot of small companies which are delivering, uh, which are managing the uh, charging stations, private ones. Yes, yeah, small ones with some of, uh, well, I was talking about uh, New Aquitaine, my region uh, in France, but there are five or six companies today uh, managing uh, charging stations all over the region. They are interoperable, of course, and they have between, uh, for one, it's, I think it's 150 stations, and the new one, new west, new west one is only 20 stations for the time being, but it, it is applying for new tenders. 
So there are many different uh, enterprises that are many of the charging stations in France. Some can manage um, the number of uh, charging stations up to 2000 and some only 20. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not, not thousands, not thousands yet. Well, not well, maybe it's wrong, but I was talking about my, my region. It's the biggest uh -huh. one, I think, is only 150. I may, uh, I may yeah, think yeah. 150. Yeah. Between 150 and 200. Yeah, yeah. Uh, như ông Dominic có chia sẻ thì uh, ban đầu ấy, cái việc khởi tạo các cái trạm sạc ở Pháp thì do chính quyền địa phương quản lý nhưng mà hiện nay thì các uh, doanh nghiệp tư nhân thì um, đang quản lý các cái trạm sạc này có những cái doanh nghiệp lớn thì họ sẽ quản lý số lượng lớn và doanh nghiệp nhỏ hơn thì sẽ quản lý số lượng nhỏ hơn ạ. Thế là uh, chia sẻ từ phía ông Dominic ạ. Không biết anh Đức có câu hỏi nào khác không ạ? Dạ. Yeah. Cảm ơn anh ạ. Uh, I think that Mr. Đức is satisfied with your answers. Thank you for that. Thank you. Yes.